Hey everybody, Wayne's Workshop here, and today I'm back with the next installment in the Pepakura Basic Series, and this one is about scaling your Pepakura files. I wanted to do a separate video on this because scaling is still a little bit tricky and there's two ways to do it, and even the more uh, seasoned Pepakura user can still learn a trick or two from this method, so let's get going. So scaling in Pepakura, it can be a bit constrictive. If you want to scale it up or down, it does it on all scales. That means for height, depth, and width. This is a blessing and a curse at the same time. To solve this, there's two things you can do. First, download this template right here. It's available in the description down below. Then trace it out twice out of cardboard or foam and cut them out until you have something like this two pieces. Then poke a hole through it. And then with the points facing each other, you grab a nut and a bolt, stick it through the hole and attach it. Don't have a nut and bolt laying around, go budget. Just saw off the end of a bottle and use the end cap as your nut and bolt. Fixed. So why a body caliper, you might ask? Well, Pepakura measures from point to point. So you have to measure your body from that point to point that you're measuring. A flat ruler is kind of hard to place on a rounded body part. So with your body caliper, you can measure it from point to point and even like from ear to ear, measure from one point of your chest to the other point of your chest, or like I said, from ear to ear, grab a ruler, lay it flat, and measure that point to point. And for me, it was 16 centimeters. Now that you have your body caliper, and you know how to measure, it's onwards to the second one. Let's just assume that you're building this tracer torso, and you got everything correct. You got the height correct, and you got the width correct, but the depth, eh it still won't fit. We're gonna take a look at the 2D menu of Pepakura and I'll show you over there. All right, so here we are in Pepakura again with the tracer model. And you got the height correct, you have the width correct, but like I said, the depth, eh, maybe that doesn't fit quite well. Uh, we'll have to look for an easy point in which we can manipulate the model so that the depth will fit you and what we're seeing in the 3D menu is that these two that these two connector points on either side are easy to cut and then extend because if we were to extend them by Pepakura it would also extend the height and the, and the width all the other measurements and we don't want that we only want the depth so let's just focus on this part for now in the 2D menu, we'll see this one is highlighted again. And we need to extend it. So we will go to the Join Disjoin Face option. And you can see all of these lines popping out. This is a function used in unfolding, but we can use it to extend some models as well. So let's just break it down right in the middle here. Now there's two parts, and we want to extend that. The program itself won't allow it, so we'll have to do it. I'll just move a couple of these aside so it's easier for you guys to see. Let's say you're coming about short, let's say eight centimeters. I'll just move it a little bit out of each other and we'll go to the measured distance between two points. If you've seen my previous video, I go over all the options. This option is, like it said, to measure between two points. Now, in my previous video, I showed you that I measure in the 3D menu, like from here, from point to point, and it says it's 24 centimeters. Now, it also works in the 2D menu. You can see this point to this point is now 6.7. We said we wanted to extend it by eight centimeters, so we'll go back to select and move and move it a little bit, go back to measure point to point, 
And now we have it at 8. Measure the other one. Yeah, also 8.1. This is fine. If you would print this now, you'd still have these two separate parts. What you need to do when you're cutting out your template is just imagine this line right here and cut it and imagine this line here and cut it. Then like you would normally flip it over and trace it out on foam for both sides. You have now extended your model's depth and not the height and the width because well, you left everything else intact. You only adapted some templates for the depth of your model. I can show you on a different model as well so you can get a better understanding of it and that we're not so fixated on one model. And that's my own uh, Iron Man Star Booster armor. So here we have the Iron Man Star Booster Mark 39 abs. Now Iron Man in his armor has a extremely slim waist. I do not. So what I did is I got the height correct. I just went at it from there and I adapted the same method that I just showed you. I can show it here again. Move that aside. Here we see the back parts of the spine. These are ideal for extending because we can run a line straight through the middle because this part allows it. If we go to the joint disjoint face, you see a line, the model allows it. If your model doesn't allow it on the spine, let's say you're doing it on the abs, try to find a inconspicuous part. It could be like on the side of the spine, maybe around the edges of your waist where your arms would be resting. Some part where it doesn't distort the accuracy of the model if you're going for that sort of thing. It's always best to do it in those places. So back to the model. We have the spine plates here and we cut them up again right down the middle. So now we got this model and it's neatly cut in half. So I needed to I, I needed to do this way larger but just for the sake of reference like I just showed you we extend this by so far. You can tell if you've lined it up correctly again with measure distance between two points because you see a line you can see it's pretty straight here. Pretty straight. 6.4 let's just say I needed to extend it by 6.4 just for the sake of the video. See, this one is still pretty straight, 6.4. This one, 6.2. My foam is stretchy, so we can, we can get away with this. 6.29, still good. 6.1. You know what, I'll, t I'll take it. So now we've successfully extended it, and then you just go about your business, you place everything ready for printing, and when you have it printed out, it should look something like this. See? Now, we're going to cut this. Like I said, you have to imagine these lines. Easy way to do it with a ruler. Now, I've cut around the template, but not this line, because I want to keep it extended. So from this point to this point, we need to cut it now. Grab our ruler, place it on those points, and cut same one for the bottom and cut and there you have it we have just extended this spine plate to be wider not longer not deeper just wider you can do this on any body part in Papakura you just split it where you seem de deem fit or that the model allows it you can do it on your arms, you can do it on your chest, your whole body, even your head. You can do it on any model you want. Together with the body caliper, you are almost free of mistakes. One last thing is we were measuring my head at 16 centimeters. Always remember to add the thickness of your 
used foam. So let's say you're using uh, also five millimeters. My head was 16 centimeters. On one side is five millimeters of foam. And on the other side is also five millimeters of foam. So 16 centimeters plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 is 17 centimeters. So the helmet in Papakura needs to be 17 centimeters wide at least. Papakura thinks flat. You have to calculate in the thickness of the foam you're using. It could be 0 0.5, could be 0 0.3 inches, quarter inches, you name it. You have to think for the program because it thinks flat. I hope this helped you out in clearing up some mistakes that you might have made in Papakura. I know I made a lot of mistakes in the beginning. Like always, if this helped you, like and share it so that others can be helped as well. And good luck. I'll see you in the next video. I am the Papakura Basic Series. And this one is about scaling your... Um, I'm doing this, but it's...